So let's talk about the Markov assumption in uh, Bayesian uh, probabilities. So the idea is that usually events depend on previous events. So the way the outlook's going to be for the day to day depends on what's happened throughout the day, right? Now, Markov said that yes, that is true, but you not you don't always need to take the whole day, right? to know what's going to happen in the next, say, 10 minutes, right? Perhaps we can just look out the window right now and say, you know, with cert with fair certainty, in 10 minutes it's going to be just like now, or if you see clouds coming in 10 minutes, it's going to be rainy, right? But given just the one spot in time, you can probably predict what's going to happen in the near future, right? I don't know what's going to happen in, I don't know, seven days from now just looking at my window right but i also could have a decent idea if i keep track of what's been happening now uh, this mark of assumption doesn't always get the predictions right but most of the times for many many situations it's pretty accurate for example if you want to cross the street it doesn't matter how cars have how many cars have passed through that street throughout the day you just need to look in one minute and one second in time to know if you can cross the street the next second, right? You don't need you don't need to be like looking at the street for several seconds to detect the car's pattern. You just need to look, hey, are there cars coming? Yes, no. That's the only thing you need. And then the next time you just cross the street. So usually a lot of the uh, predictions you can make, you can make by just looking at the one previous event. And this is how time series um, or time predictions using Bayesian rule happen. We look at a certain amount of times in the past and we predict the future. And for many events, uh, Markov assumes that you only need to look at the one previous event to know future events. So, for example, if you have the probability of several events happening in sequence, right? Whatever, right? What Markov says is that, well, you don't need to look at the whole sequence. You just need to look at one event given the previous event. So if we look at it here, for example, the probability of today's outlook will depend on yesterday's outlook, right? So if yesterday was overall cloudy, well, chances are that today is also going to be cloudy, right? Or if yesterday was cloudy, but not so much, then today might be sunny. I don't know. Right? So the idea is that the probability of, say, the outlook of today depends on the outlook of yesterday, right? t minus 1. t is a slice in time, because we're always assuming that these are things that evolve in time. We call that transition probability. Now, in general, what I was saying before, if you have the probability of several events, x1, x2, xn, let's say those are outlook of day 1, day 2, day n, taking on some values, uh, I don't know, cloudy, rainy, sunny, right? So the probability of several days taking on different outlooks, for example, it's basically the multiplication of the probability of the outlook of one day given the outlook of the previous day. And that's why this is i plus 1 and this is i, right? One can also say the probability of changing the index here. One can also say the probability of xi given xi minus 1. However you want to note it, but it's the multiplication of the probability of the outlook of one day given what happened in the previous day. So for this, we need to know what happened the previous day and we need to know some probabilities. We need to know those probabilities, the or parameters, right? So the probability of um, one day given the previous day, right? So we need to know those probabilities. And one way to get this probability is just looking. Right? So if you download weather data, for example, you can determine whether the outlook for the whole year, for every day of the year, and based on every day of the year, you can create a little table like this one. So if today, that's going to be xt minus 1 in, in this equation, if today is sunny, the next day will be sunny. And then you count how many times there was a sunny day after a sunny day, and you see that that's 80% of the times. If there was a sunny day, 80% of the times the next day was sunny. 15% of the times the day was cloudy, and 5% of the times the day was rainy. So 
you get your data somehow and you can create this probability table. There are other ways to create these probability tables, but that's not the subject of this, um, of this video. So, but basically you can just observe, right? And this table can answer questions like, okay, if, the first, if I see a sunny day on day one, what is the probability that day two is going to be cloudy? Well, you look at, well, there's today's sunny, what's the probability that it's going to be cloudy? 15%. So you can answer questions like that. Imagine these are stocks, right? You watch stocks for a whole year, right? And you know whether they're going to be up or down. And you, you can wonder, you can ask yourself, well, what if the stocks were down one day? What's the probability that they're going to go up the next day, right? Uh, you can have more categories than just up and down. You can have, you know, a bunch of, a bunch of uh, fine grain detail. Here I have three by three, but you can have many by many. Now, the other thing that you can ask is what's the probability that if the day one was sunny, day two is cloudy, three is cloudy, and four is rainy? Well, for that, you have to do this product that we just saw on this page. We have to do this, right? So we would multiply, okay, what's the probability of day two given day one times the probability of day three given day two times the probability of day four given day three, right? So I just, I just based my probability, my transition probabilities on the previous event only, right? So we do this. What's the probability that day two is cloudy given that day one was sunny? Well, if day one was sunny, day two is cloudy, 0 0.15. Now, what's the probability that x3, day three is cloudy, given that day two was cloudy, right? So what's the probability of cloudy, cloudy? 0 0.4. And what's the probability of x4 is rainy, given that the previous day was cloudy? Well, so rainy, given that the previous day was cloudy, is 0 0.2, right? And uh, <clears throat> cloudy, cloudy, yes. So, and then we just multiply this, right? So we have this will be, so 0 0.08, 0 0.012. So there's a 1.2% probability that this sequence of days will happen. You can think of it as a sequence of events. There's a whatever probability, in this case 0 0.012, that this sequence of events happens. Right. So you can see like stocks that are, for example, if you if you translate this to stocks, right, you can see that um, the market is moving or some some stocks are pretty robust. So they behave predictably. Well, you can compute the probability that their sequence is going to be up, 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 down, up, whatever. Right. You can do that using this Markov assumption. Now, um, Another thing that is interesting about Markov assumption is, is um, well, here, the first day sunny was given, right? And that is a big, um, that is a big uh, thing that you are given. But sometimes you don't have that. So you can either use this table to generate probabilities, or you can just watch, again, the same data, and see how many days overall were sunny, how many days overall were cloudy, how many days rainy, and you can compute the probability of any day, no, no index, being sunny, the probability of any day being cloudy, and the probability of any day given rainy, for example, being rainy, right? And that's gonna be very important because there's another question that we can ask with these probabilities. And let's say, for example, I got this. The probability of sun is this, cloudy and rainy. Let's say those are the probabilities, and I'm going to call this the initial probabilities. Like, if I don't know anything, this is the probability with which any day can be cloudy, rainy, or sunny. Now, if uh, so, so if nobody tells me what the day was, then I assume these probabilities. If somebody tells me what the day was, then the probability of that day being whatever they told me is one. Now, using the Bayes rule, the idea would be compute the probability of yesterday's weather 
given, to, given today. What is this going to do? Well, we can, we can ask another question. So, for example, if I am today, if I see myself today in this situation, okay, what sequence of events, what sequence of days, for example, are the most likely sequence to have to have resulted in today being sunny, right? Or what is the most likely sequence of events uh, at any given point in time that determine that I am wherever I am in time now? And again, this you can you can create a lot of um, a lot of examples with this either in the stock market, uh, either in uh, predictions, or also in robots, for example. What is the most likely uh, sequence of events that has happened for me to be where I am at? You can think of also uh, deduction, for example. If, if there are several states in which you can find a, a rescue robot can find a room, right? It finds a room in a certain state and it can query based on previous probabilities what is most likely have happened so that I am in the state that I am. Are the, the, is the building structurally sound or whatever, you know? If you know what events led to right now, the event that you see right now, that's, that's, a, that's a plus. That's something that you want to be able to compute. So <clears throat> let's look at the, the key for this is to do this table in reverse. Would be to know the probability of the previous event given the current event, right? That's the opposite of this table where you have the probability of the future event given the previous event, okay? So how do we compute the probability of the previous event given the current event? For that, we use Bayes. I'm gonna write this little here. The probability of the previous event given the current event if we use the Bayesian, the base rule, right? Remember base rule, probability of A given B is the same as the probability of B given A times probability of A divided by probability of B. Sometimes people say that's eta times probability of uh, B given A times probability of A. Okay, all those work. Now, this slide is getting very cramped, but I'm going to use that exact same rule. And I'm going to expand this. So this will be, I'm going to say eta for now, the probability of, or no, that's fine. Let's not use eta. I'm going to say that this is the probability of xt given xt minus 1. I'm doing the exact same thing times the probability of xt minus 1. Whoops, I don't have any room. Let me just redo this. The probability of xt minus 1 given xt is going to be equal to the probability of, and we flip this to, the probability of xt given xt minus 1, which we know from the table, times the probability of xt minus 1, which we know from here, divided by the probability of x t minus 1. Okay? Now, uh, xt, I'm sorry, the probability of xt. All right, so we can use this because we know the probability of xt given xt minus 1 that's in the table, and we know the probabilities of each day because they're given right here. So let's see how this develops. So we say that the probability of xt minus 1 given xt is equal to eta, and eta, basically it's going to be one over the probability of xt, okay? Times the probability of xt given xt minus one times the probability of xt minus one. <clears throat> so let's start doing this. What is the probability, for example? Now we have the, prob the different probabilities for xt minus 1 and xt is the same, right? The probability that any day is rainy, any day is cloudy, any day is sunny. And this is our transition table. So let's do another table where we're going to say if today is whatever, yesterday was something else. So we can use this probability. So let's compute the first one, um, the sunny. Well, the probability that today was sunny 
uh, that x I'm sorry that yesterday is sunny given that today is sunny right will be by using that formula will be the probability of today being sunny given that yesterday was sunny times the probability of yesterday being sunny divided by the probability that today is sunny okay now let's look at these probabilities one by one the probability that yesterday was sunny any day was sunny and the probability that today is sunny they're the same they're the probability that any day is sunny so you can cancel those out and then we're just left with computing this part the probability that today is sunny given that yesterday was sunny so if today was sunny or you know tomorrow is sunny given that today is sunny, whatever you know one day and the day before so the probability that if today is sunny tomorrow will be sunny is 0 0.8 so we are only left with the 0 0.8 here right there now now we're going to find what is the probability that uh, yesterday was cloudy given that today was sunny right well the probability that yesterday was cloudy given that today was sunny is by Bayesian rule is by using this rule here is the probability that today is sunny given that or tomorrow is sunny given that the day before it was cloudy times the probability that a day is cloudy divided by the probability that today is sunny so if we replace the numbers here well the cloudy and the sunny that those are easy cloudy the probability that any day is cloudy is here 0 0.29 the probability that any day is sunny right is right here oops, sorry is right here is 0 0.65 according to the table up there and what is the transition probability so that uh, one day is sunny if the previous day was cloudy so if today is cloudy tomorrow will be sunny is 0 0.4 so I'm gonna put here uh, I'm gonna replace this probability with a 0 0.4 if you multiply that that is 0 point if you multiply these two this this whole thing gives you you can do that it gives you 0 0.178 or approximately 0 0.18 right so in the same way you can compute that whole table make sure that your table looks a little bit like this these are approximate numbers so if you work with three decimals or more your numbers might be slightly different but make sure you get there and then with this transition table you can backtrack and see which was the 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 most likely uh, sequence that generated the data that you have.